on BBC Radio Northampton. This is Helen Blady. How many times does your phone ring during the day? How many times is it someone trying to sell you something or want to talk about that accident that you had? Some of these perhaps sound familiar? Hello? This is Daniel and I'm calling you from RTM Road Traffic Accident Management. We've been passed on your details about your um, accident. Just with regards to the road traffic accident you're involved, I'm just wondering if now's a good time to set up your personal injury claim for you. The average person in Northamptonshire receives 12 nuisance calls every month, according to new research, and it's something which winds you up a tree. I said to one of the geezers on the phone, I said, how do you get my number? Oh, we got it off the da- database. I said, what database? I did have one particular issue where one claims management company gave me their name. They said they were a major law firm based in Birmingham. I happened to recognise the name, called the law firm in London and found out that fact that people have been illegally impersonating a, f- a well-known law firm. They said thank you for my donation. They asked me why I donated. I explained that it was because my mum had recently been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I just felt like they were really, really pressuring me to try and donate and she just kept repeating over and over again how low the cancer survival rates were. Chris Hicks is the spokesperson for CBR Call Blocker, the people behind the research. Ian Smith from Northamptonshire Trading Standards. Morning both. Morning guys. Let's start with you, Chris, then. Twelve calls a month seems like an awful lot, but some people are getting far more. Yes, actually. I mean, we we found that 8% of people in Northampton are receiving 26 to 30 nuisance calls. I mean, that's relating to almost one a, one a day per month. I mean, it's it's really a, quite a staggering uh, statistic there. But, I mean, we also found overall that nationally that 60 million nuisance calls are being made every single month. So it's uh, it's it's a critical issue. And what are the most prolific types of call? What are they wanting us to do? Well, of course, it's the dreaded PPI claims, uh, car accident compensation, and and third in the list it was the kind of the automated marketing calls, you know, so just the the automated messages where they can't even be bothered to call you live. And what's this about handing over money to charity? Yes, it's uh, it's a real uh, it's a real concern, certainly with with the charities, but also um, a lot of organisations pretending to to. Work Work for charities, or, or using these kind of um, these kind of tactics to come across as legitimate. I mean, what we also found here was that 22 percent of people uh, within Northampton have either been scammed over the phone or know someone who has been. I mean, that's almost one in four individuals in the area who who have been affected by this. It's 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 truly a major issue. Where are these calls coming from, then, Chris? It's it's difficult to say, really. I mean, we find that the majority are coming appear to be coming from within the UK. But the thing that scammers do a lot of the time is that they do what what we call spoofing numbers. So they make themselves appear that they're coming from a particular region, but they may be coming from anywhere in the world. And and of course, one of the issues with this, in terms of regulation, is that they're coming from countries, in in some cases, that are outside of the UK's jurisdiction. So it's difficult to actually prosecute them. Ian, from a trading standards point of view, are you getting a lot of calls regarding uh, nuisance phone calls? Uh, yeah, we do get a number of calls about uh, nuisance telephone calls, but it's normally not the fact that they're a nuisance when you're talking about trading standards. It's either uh, somebody trying to scam somebody or it's somebody they don't recognise, uh, contacting them out of the blue uh, or making claims that uh, the person who's received the call uh, thinks is, uh, well, misleading. Mm. So what's your advice for people who are being plagued by them? If we're getting, on average, 12 a month, there's people who are getting an awful lot more. Yeah, well, clearly, um, nuisance calls is an issue. And if you want to do something or try to cut them down, there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, registering with the uh, telephone preference service is one of them. Um, They're run by the direct marketing service, uh, and they're free. Um, And if you register with them, then uh, no company should contact you out of the blue to uh, market uh, their wares to you. Uh, But you've got to be careful with that because uh, it's... Companies who contact you after you've registered with CPS can, should only be able to do so with your prior consent. Um, and if 
you go online or something like that or buy a service or buy some goods online, I think you'll often find that uh, they ask whether it's okay to contact you again for whatever. And of course, if you tick that, you give prior consent. So you mm. might go and give the door again for people to contact you. Um, another sort of practical way is uh, call blocking. Um, most service providers, I understand, do provide a call blocking service, but there will be a charge for that. Um, and the charges will vary depending on who your service provider is. Uh, and there is a, another possibility, which is a call blocker device, uh, which, as I understand it, is, is, a, is an electronic device that will ha may be pre-programmed with a number of nuisance numbers already and it will automatically stop them coming through. Or if you do get a nuisance call, you can basically screen it and you recognise it, you can press the button and it will recognise that number and it will stop any more of those numbers coming through. So that's another practical way. But those devices, I understand, can cost between £40 and £95, pounds, mm. depending on which particular device you want. And at what point did people contact Trading Standards about this? Um, well, like I say, whether they think they're being scammed or whether they think uh, somebody sold them or tried to sell them something that's misleading, uh, whatever. But there are other uh, regulatory authorities that, that specifically deal with this sort of thing. Um, Ofcom is one. Um, they deal with silent and abandoned calls. So, you know, when uh, you know the phone rings, you pick it up and there's nobody there. So you've actually had to go and answer the phone and they've just left the call. Or there's a voice message saying, I'm terribly sorry, but the person phoning you is, is, is now rang off. Mm. Um, that is dealt with by Ofcom. And uh, if you complain to Ofcom, they might not do anything about your particular um, instance, but they will collect uh, the information. And companies that are found to be excessive in that uh, will, you know, they can fine at the end of the day. And frankly, I think uh, when I was on the Ofcom website, I saw that they fined Talk Talk uh, £750,000 uh, for making excessive um, abandoned and silent calls in 2011. <laughs> Ian, thank you. Ian Smith from Northamptonshire Trading Standards. Chris Hicks, who's a spokesperson for CBR Call Blocker. They're the people behind this research. So how many do you reckon you get? 01604 Do you get a lot of nuisance calls? BBC Radio Northampton.